Welcome, painters and decorators of the interweb. This is part two, following on from the, obviously part one, um, doing a bit of papering. Now, I said I'd come back to you after I've done, on the first part, I showed you going into an internal angle. And now, I think, I think really the second part needs to be doing reveals. Now, it doesn't matter whether it's a reveal into a door like this or a reveal into a window which I said I'll show you how to do a window reveal it's neither in or there really because they're all exactly the same sort of principle I'm gonna talk you through it if you don't understand it comments ask now I'll take you off camera and I'll show you what we're doing so bear with me I can still talk to you while I'm doing this now I'll flip you over and let's do a bit of a talking hopefully my sound keeps all right Right, what I've done, I've come down these angles, done all the angles, used my laser liner, brought it in, full drops, dead easy, paste the wall, paste the walls dead easy. I've got a two and a half inch emulsion brush, that's the Eco, um, Eco Ease brush, and then I've got a medium pile roller, cut in, roll, dead easy I can't go wrong with that now we're coming up to a light switch that's a bit tricky Brian who did the lining for me has already got these off so what I'll do I'll get that in place like that mark it I've got a video if you want to look in the corner for going around light switches I'm not talking about that now because we know how to do that what I want to talk about is how we come across the top round this angle there and do that piece underneath now various ways of doing it secret of decent proper paper hanging is the less cuts the better so i know some people will cut a piece probably from there all the way around hang it have a joint there doing a splice like brian's done with his own um, lining paper doesn't matter with lining paper you can see where he spliced it over cut cut it through joined it up i don't want to do that i want to hang a width all the way across and that's where it falls so that'll be a full with the paper dropping all the way down to the bottom now you're going to say how are you going to do that then phil well i'm going to get it on be a bit of a faff around the switches because i can't take that one off i'll just have to cut it neat around the edges the wall is going like a wave i can't do anything about that i know it's going like a wave because when i put these lengths on i struggle to keep the butt joint going without forcing it if you know what i mean making it work i got it in and they're all butt joint nicely but what i'll do i'll drop this piece down top to bottom and then because i don't want a joint going up there i will neatly cut following if i just get my blade out oh i've not got my blade on got my tools here sorry put them down what i'll do if that was a full piece of paper hanging all the way down i'll get a blade and i'll make sure it's sharp and i will cut following that underside there so that will give me a cut across there and that's a bit rounded so make sure you do it the furthest part don't do it on an angle there do it further round so it just nips across it i will leave that blank and that'll be a filling piece that will give me a flap of paper that i can just wrap round in one there now i'll say wrap round in one i don't always like doing that because if these angles are really running out the best way to do it is trim it with a bit of an overlap just there and put your piece on top of it now if this doesn't run out too bad because it's a short width I'll be able to probably work that work me wonders and get that all the way around in one if it doesn't it'll be a case of just trimming off a bit like doing an internal angle it's then on an external wrap it round, trim it and then overlay your paper so that's the principle of what I'm going to do on that and that way I don't have a joint there because joints gather dust they get the heat from the central heating and they can start springing so I want to see this in one piece with me only just having to put a filling piece underneath there and you'll say Phil how do you do a filling piece underneath there well this isn't a pattern that needs to match but if it was a pattern match you match it to whatever the piece was there make sure it's um, got enough cut it cut it to the 
edge, you know, up against your frame, and then do a neat pencil mark or score it and trim it, and then you'll have a butt joint straight up against that edge. Now, some people will say, oh, you don't want a butt joint. Let me trust, trust me. If you get it neat and with skill, a butt joint straight across there isn't seen. Some people will wrap it round and they'll splice it through. I don't want to see a cut joint there because that can show, particularly if you've got pattern papers, if you just slightly get it out, like the pattern's out, it will show. But if you can do a neat cut on that edge, the blind man on the galloping horse will not see where you've lost that cut. So bear with me, I'll put you on hold. I'll get a piece ready to hang. And when I come to this part, I'll explain how I do it. So are you following me so far? Yes, Phil, yes, Phil. So there we have it, that was a speeded up version of me hanging that length, cutting around that socket there, getting that on, that was tricky because I couldn't take that off because it's a, a box socket and then coming down to um, the actual ordinary socket just there which I've took the paper behind so we're all good on that. Now what I want to show you is this up here because it's all in one piece so I'll stop you, I'll swivel you around and let's have a look. Hello, I'm back. Right, see that? I've gone around the socket. I've got the joints down best I can. I've not finished on the joints yet. So you can see this. This is when you get into your paper and you've got decent wallpaper paste. Look, there's a joint. I can pull it away and then I can push it back into place. So this is where I like to work right to left. Any of the joints I can just manipulate with my hand. And once I know they're in place, I wipe them down with a sponge and go over with the seam roller just to get them down. But I'm not looking at joints, I'm not telling you how to wallpaper, we've gone beyond that. We're doing these tricky bits. Now this was very tricky. Oh, you probably won't focus because the paper's not brilliant. I had to cut to the corners, get it on. I'll wipe that down and clean it up in a minute. But there's a big hump there. You can't really see it. And I've had to cut that free hand at the top. You can just see that I couldn't get a blade on it. Even the ceiling coving's all over the place with, with the straight edge. All I can do is just follow that line of that ceiling cove. But right, we've done all that. We're good on these joints. I've got to make it sure they're down because I couldn't take it off to get round it. That's all neat. Just push it all in, make sure it's down. So we've done that. Now this is where I'm trying to get you to show you. This is one width, one width all the way across. Now what I'm going to do, I'll have to take you off camera because I need to do it neat. I'm going to cut this straight across there with a blade. Then that flap can wrap in on one. So because that's a, a rounded corner, I can't, it's not a straight 45 degree. So I'm just going to manipulate it a bit with my finger I might even just get the straight edge, just so I don't waver. Hold the straight edge, let's get the straight edge. If I can get the straight edge on this corner here, let's move it around so you don't see the lettering, and get myself a nice, there's the corner, 
go along there a nice blade across there that will give me a nice straight cut and that's what I'm going to do I'm going to mark it like that cut it with the blade I won't do it holding the camera because I don't want to slip and then we'll wrap it around so get you back on the stand and I'll show you how to do it so I've gave you the principle of that if I can get you in closer I will do I know people are going to say oh we splice it through I don't want to do splicing I've just said to you I want to have the least cuts in the paper as possible so let's get you up like that you'll get me idea now I've got a sharp blade in bear with me if this swearing and cursing you know I've cut it wrong There's the corner. Just give me. I don't want to bend. Don't want to bend the sheet metal there because it will mean I could have a bow in the actual cut. So keeping it flat, draw it towards you. Get it going. Don't stop on it. And I've hit the reveal corner there. There's the flap. You see? And that will go in. Get the idea? Get the idea? Let's bring you back off. So you can see that. I've actually cut it with a straight edge all the way along following that line following that line I can't see myself Maybe around on that. so that is the flap it was like that and I've cut it and that will go into there now because I don't want to be working with that big flap I'll go from the bottom I'll get the bottom down I'll cut with a bit of salvage edge so I'll probably trim off a good six inch of that so I can get it in and that goes into that corner like that at the minute there's the brackets to stop me getting into that corner now if you find you've got a little piece missing don't worry about that because when you put that piece in underneath there you overlap that piece there and you can cloak it and lose it so a bit of trickery you won't have any problem like that a lot of the time it's actually virtually a straight corner and you don't have any problem but I will manipulate and work that and you won't see any missing paper there because that is the tricks of the trade so can you see what I've done I've had no splice there I've had no splice there and the final piece will be a filling piece there but you do that filling piece after you've got that length on and you've already got the joint there to butt up to and I'll show you that when I've got that one on so are we all good are we understanding it I'll show you when it's finished thank you we oui. so there we go that was a little bit fiddly I've trimmed it back these were awkward because they were very tight up against the paper so I've had to neatly cut it get that in then drop a piece at the back and because I couldn't really get any paste at the back very easy we paste the wall put it on my finger and pulled it back out pasted the paper and just pulled it back in but straight neat cut with the straight edge there exactly the same there that could actually go and feed in I've wiped all these down they're a little bit wet at the minute because they've got the sponge water on but you can see that's gone into that angle there and it is virtually neat it's better than I actually thought when I showed you earlier so my next piece will go across there and wrap underneath and then I will do a fill in and show you how you do that fill in piece and why am I showing you this because I personally don't like to see splicing I don't like to see patches and doing it this way you reduced a lot of cutting it's a bit fiddly and you take your time with it but I've only got one piece to put in there and doing a neat clean cut across there you won't notice it trust me now one thing I will say when you are wrapping around a corner like this if the good corners you can get away with it if you can't I'd have to wrap it around a fraction trim it back wrap it around a fraction and then hang 
a piece there overlapping it like I would if it was a, a bigger external but if it was running out really bad like a grounds back leg there is no way you can wrap round in one without having these dry out and then caravan and balloon up on you and that is a big telltale sign to whether somebody knows how to do correct wallpapering or not but when the, when it isn't a bad angle like that isn't you can get it round now top to bottom where would you start wrapping it around start with the middle start with the middle get it working get a sponge on it work it round the corner and go to the top then from the middle back down to the bottom and that you'll find a lot easier than trying to hang it from the top wrapping it wrapping it wrapping it wrapping it to the bottom so top tip tuesday when you are wrapping around corners and externals start with your middle and work up and then down or middle down and then up don't try and go from the top down in one because you'll find your pattern if you've got pattern paper will run out and you'll um, lose it and get frustrated and rip it off but that is pretty good it was awkward cutting around the carpet i've managed to get that down best i can once the carpet springs up and i can push it back that's pretty good i wipe the skirt in my joints are good i'm happy around these sockets they could really do be changing couldn't they but i don't think customer wants to pay for that and then the switch at the top so give us a few minutes i'll get that one on and then we'll come back to filling in on that and that will be your um pro tip tuesday for how to go around an internal window or a door where you've got a reveal like this so thanks for listening before i get onto these pieces underneath i've actually hung the piece in the middle and then i've come the other side of this window stroke door reveal now a key tip i'm going to give you another top tip get your laser or your plumb bob out because as you come over the top and drop because i've dropped it a full length down again i've dropped a full length down i've gone into the angle cut it wrapped it round neatly nicely made sure i've worked it so the edge is nicely done but you'll find when you come off this top and drop this length down because it's all in one piece it'll run out but it won't run out if you've got your laser matching up at the top because you see oh there see where the laser is that's it that's the line top to bottom as that comes down i've kept the paper to that all the way to the bottom you follow it don't you get a laser liner so much easier you don't big you don't build houses now and dig footings with spades do you, you get a digger on it so get a laser right i'm going to show you how you do these undersides now Ten minute. here we go this is the last piece i want to show you it's filling in that blank spot on this well window reveal door reveal whatever it wants to be it doesn't matter whether it's a window reveal or a door reveal it's the same principle and what we're trying to do is not have cuts splicing in on the main face of the paper so what i've done i showed you earlier drop it down and we've got a little piece underneath that wants um a bit of trickery on it now there was two sides i've got that side up there i've done that was a bit longer that went from there to there i've done exactly the same principle that i'm going to show you now and what that is again it's paste the paper it's paste the wall not paste the paper so i've just pasted that i've made sure that the cut edge across there of the paper is straight so what i've done I've gone with a sharp blade gone with my straight edge and made sure the cut across that corner is straight so no wavy wavy now i've cut a piece of paper off make sure i mean i'm quite lucky because this isn't um, a pattern paper but if it was a pattern paper you'd obviously match your paper up now i've made sure i've got the top i've marked it at the top i don't know if you can see that i marked it at the top and what i'm going to be doing because i've tried to cut that as neat as i could with shears i folded it over got a straight line so i'd like to if i could or if i can get this edge against that edge there get the idea so right that's too long let's have a look how much right that's too long for me let's rip it off there 
this is the piece I want to work with. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to try and get that edge, which is straight, to virtually butt up against that edge and see how it is. Work it into the actual frame. Sorry about that, I had to go away, camera battery went. So what we're doing, we're getting a butt joint there, and where I've cut that new piece of paper, I want to butt joint it against the piece that's trimmed off when I drop the whole length down. So that's what we're trying to do, we're working it in. I'm working into these corners. Don't forget, when I hung that first length, there was a bit of a gap because it ran out. So allow a little bit of salvage overlap so that can go underneath there in the corner. I'll show you when we do a close up. Better getting that in. Working it with your fingers. Going all the way across. Oh, I don't want to do that. I've left enough there for an overlap flap that can just trim it into the gap that's missing. And I'm going to bring that across there. I'm quite liking how that is butt jointing. I'm going to work on that in a minute. With this being a bit of a vinyl paper, you can warm it with your fingers and manipulate it. So if it is running a bit out because the trimming's not right, bump it across. That's going into there nicely. Where's that corner? That corner's there. Bit of shape there. All the way across. So that's nearly in. I'm gonna trim I'm gonna trim that off now. Actually trimmed off nicely into the frame. Just going to bump it and move it across to get the butt joints there. Now where? Yeah, let's have a look. Oh, it's a fraction. I don't need as much as that, so I'm just going to trim that down there. at the back, drop that in there, all the way around, pull that away, look at that, that's lovely, you can't see it, I'll zoom in in a minute and show you, that's lost it, alright, we're going to work on this now, swipe it in place. I'll bring you off so you can see what I've done. You get the idea. Don't forget this isn't finished. Right, you're not gonna show this paper so pale. So let's just pull that away. That edge there, you see that edge there is butting up against that clean edge that's a cut from this piece down. So that is what I'm going to be working on in a minute. Getting the seam roller on it, getting the sponge, manipulating it so we get a nice clean, oh, it's, we've gone blurred, lost the focus. That isn't far off it. We've got a butt joint coming there, that's nice. We've cut it neat across this edge there and we've just lost it into that corner and where we've got a little bit missing, 
I've overlapped it in and only a fraction that's all it needed so we don't lose anything there that corner we're working on and I'm going to come across there manipulate it I'm just moving it with my fingers and we're getting it butt joint so if you can bear with me and trust me on that I'm going to say goodbye for now I'm going to clean it all up and then I'll come back and show you what it's actually like but that's how you do it so you don't get splice joints top to bottom that can start showing dark with the heat of the room and you don't want any more joints in any wallpaper than you need to and this is a good way of disguising it and losing it on an angle particularly if I come across to where the window is it's the same principle there you'd have a curtain normally a curtain so that disguises it and you won't see it but that is where I want to be now I've done the same with that side you can't really see but we call it a blind man on a galloping horse won't be looking at that joint there across that external return and by the time I've finished and got it down you won't see it and the key is once you come back the next day you just go over it with your seam roller again just to push anything down and that's where we are so I'm going to do that I'm going to say thanks for watching how you do it because we're nearly down with it now and it's as good as I want it to be to go and that's how you lose a cut joint on a reveal without splicing without overlapping round without dropping pieces in and this is how you keep your pattern going if you've got a pattern paper so there you have it I've worked on it it's down now and if you stand from eye level of looking up to it you don't see that joint there so i'm really pleased with that over and out thanks for listening thanks for watching bye bye